Hi there and welcome to our next lesson in our B4 topic and today we're going to be looking at uh, diffusion of um, gases and water in plants. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you at the end. Bye bye. Okay, so here are our objectives for today's lesson on diffusion and osmosis in plants. By the end of this lesson you should know and understand how diffusion and osmosis in plant cells occurs and the effect it has on the plant. So what is diffusion? Diffusion is the movement of particles from one place to another. It normally moves from where there is a low concentration of that, sorry, from where there is a high concentration of this particle to where there is a low concentration. So if we were to have a high concentration of particles here, they would eventually move so that they are fairly spread out to give a roughly even concentration. So the diffusion of chemicals is from a low con sorry from a high concentration to a low concentration. Now the particles have a random movement which means that they have just as much chance of moving back to here. However, they do overall have a high concentration to a low concentration. Now the rate of diffusion can change and it can vary due to these factors. Firstly, the surface area of the cell membrane. Secondly, the size of the concentration gradient. So if there's a big concentration gradient, then there will be more movement. Now the concentration gradient is the difference between the low concentration and the high concentration. And thirdly and finally the distance the particles have to move. If they have to move in a low distance then it will happen a lot quicker than if they have to travel over a high distance. Osmosis is a type of diffusion. Osmosis is the diffusion of water in a solution. Osmosis is the diffusion of water through a partially permeable membrane, which means it will allow water only through the actual membrane, so it could be the membrane of the cell. Now, water, like normal diffusion, moves from a high concentration to a low concentration, which normally means it moves from a high concentration of water to a low concentration of water, which is slightly different to normal diffusion as that, again, moves from high to low, but it's normally within the water. So if you have a high concentration of salt, it means you have a low concentration of water. So here we have three cells. Now, the first cell has a high concentration of water in its vacuole in here, which means via osmosis that water will move to here. Again, this cell has a higher concentration of water to this cell, so we get the movement of water. Eventually, you will end up with three cells that look like this where all the cells have the same concentration of water in each of their vacuoles. Now again, it may be that you get some movement going from here to here, but the net movement will remain that you have the same concentration of water in each cell. Now what we have to remember here is that it's the cell membrane that's allowing this movement of water. The cell wall helps keep that structure rigid and, and upright, but it's the membrane that allows the water to move. Now we're going to look a little bit more in depth about that movement of water and the movement of osmosis. Now here we've got uh, our partially permeable membrane, our water particles in blue and our solute particles in orange. Now here we can see we've got a higher concentration of water here, although we've got the same number of particles because you've got these solute particles here, which could be a sugar, a salt, it could be anything, uh, we have the higher concentration on this side. Now that means we will have a net movement 
to the movement of water going from here to here. Again, we might get the occasional particle going this way, but the net movement will be going to this side. Now, it's worth noting as well that it's only the water that can pass through here. The solute here, it can't pass through, so it remains on this side of the membrane. Now, this can take a while because you've got this random movement of the water particles here that are going here and here they're even colliding with each other but you will end up with that net movement from this side to this side to make it more uh, dilute on this side so how does water get into plants now here we've got a diagram of a specialized plant cell now this is what we call a root hair cell and these tend to be white in color now you can see that we've got this part which is what we call the root hair which is sticking out now what this does is it provides a large surface area now within the vacuole of the root hair cell you have a more concentrated solution and outside the cell you have a less concentrated solution now this means that there is more salt in here and more water out here. So the water will move in to the cell. And because it has a large surface area, it means it's able to absorb more of the water. Now water has several uses. The primary use is for photosynthesis. However, it's also used to keep leaves cool, transport minerals such as nitrates, phosphates and sugars, and to keep the cell of the plant firm and upright. Now plants have adapted to be able to do these things and keep a balance of water. Otherwise, they'll have too much water coming up through the roots and it can affect the growth and the sustainability of the plant. Now, the water is taken in through the roots and it is transported up through the plant via osmosis. And that allows plants to go travel with the concentration gradient. So it goes from high concentrations of water to low concentrations of water water. Now water needs to be stopped from escaping which is why it has that waxy cuticle layer to prevent evaporation of water when it gets to the leaf. It also has a large number of stoma or stomata on the bottom of the leaf meaning that they are less exposed to the water and therefore less evaporation occurs. Now plant cells as we mentioned before have a very strong cell wall. Now this means that they are able to maintain the balance of water. So if we have lots and lots of water in the plant cell, it's able to maintain that structure and shape. However, if there is a lack of water, then it can cause the plant to wilt. So the cell wall helps to prevent the actual cell from bursting which it might do if it wasn't there now the cell wall is inelastic which means it doesn't it doesn't stretch now the way the plants work is if there is a large amount of water so the water is moving up very quickly to the leaves then the stomata open now when the stomata open, when there's lots of water, then they can help get rid of some of that water vapour and the water vapour can escape through the stomata. However, if there's not enough water in the soil, then the stomata can close and it prevents the water from escaping. Now this movement of water through the plant is known as 
transpiration and it's just that movement, transport and evaporation of water. Okay, so we have come to the end of our lesson today and we have looked at a couple of things. We've looked at the diffusion where um, gases and liquids can move from areas of a high concentration to areas of a low concentration. Now the thing we need to be aware of is that with water, it's the movement of water which is osmosis. So osmosis is a type of diffusion and again we're going from high concentrations of water to low concentrations of water. And that normally happens through a semi-permeable membrane which will, or partially permeable membrane which will only allow the water through and not the uh, solutes such as the salts and sugars. Uh, and that means that we can get the movement of water up and down the plant and that be, is because of the concentration gradient so the high um, concentration of water moving to the lower concentration and again you can have the guard cells opening and closing to allow the stomata to release the gas vapour or the water vapour from the plant. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I will see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.